let's see how we can glean, take bits and pieces of revelational tips. <laughs> I mean tips, you know, like revelational tips, tips that come from revelation, not motivational tips. How we can glean them from the word of God so that we can apply them and flourish. Remember that flourish is a command. That's what led to all of this. The word has gone forth. Say, I flourish. No, 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 no. Say, I receive the command. And I go about flourishing. Intentionally. That's how you'll be judged. That's how you'll be judged. You have to flourish. That means do something intentionally to flourish. If you are serving under somebody, make sure what is put in your hands flourishes. If what is put committed to your hand does not flourish, whether it's in a church, somebody's business, somebody, whatever it is that is not your own, if you are not careful to cause it to flourish, if you wait for God to prosper, you will never prosper because if you don't flourish with what is not your own, you will not be rewarded with your own. So pay attention how you treat things that are not your own. These are things that we don't talk about in church. You're serving in somebody's business and it does not matter to you that since you came in, everything is going down. And you are hoping one day God will settle you. Even Satan will settle you and you will fail. That means there has to be intentionality in everything. You have to make it as a point of duty, as a lifestyle. Whether it is your own or not your own. If you have babysitting, you should pray every day. The baby that I'm taking care of, care of for somebody cannot fall sick. You are under my care. My father in the Lord says nothing dies in his hand. Baby, your health cannot die in my hand. You can't be sick when all I do is to take care of you as my own. I'm looking for, forward to having my own family and my children healthy. Therefore, you flourish. The earlier you flourish, the better for me. Because once you are done with one stage, the next stage is open for you. If you stand in one stage for, in life for long, it means you are not doing well then. Rise to your feet, say, nothing dies in my hand. Come on, rise, lift up your two hands. Say, nothing dies in my hand. Whether they are my personal own, whether they are my own personally, or they are entrusted to my care by another person. Things don't go down in my hand. Things Flourish in, flourish in my hands. Things get better in my hands. Was that you speaking or somebody else speaking? The day that becomes a decision and a code of life, you will be unforgettable. The day that becomes a code by which you live, a commitment of your existence, you will be unforgettable. That means everything you do is a personal signature in immortality that I will never be forgotten. It's a life of intentionality at the highest level. So let's apply the principle of firstborn to the project flourishing. This is the sweetest thing about revelation that you can apply. Revela uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 18 and 19. My favorite. Is it 18 and 19? Yes, 18 19 going forward. Ephesians, is it chapter 16? Oh, I mean verse 16. Let's start from verse 16. Let's from, do not oh, give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in what? 
Wisdom and revelation in the word of God, in the knowledge of God, means how you can apply your knowledge of God to prosper. Because when you talk about wisdom, the basic difference between wisdom and knowledge is this. Wisdom and knowledge are the same. They have correlation. Knowledge is information, access to information of how it works. Wisdom tells you how to apply what you know. When to apply, where to apply. So wisdom is practical knowledge. Yeah, it's practical. You have theoretical knowledge. Wisdom comes to help you how to download information and bring it into prax praxis and get results. Praise God. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. So you know God in the world and know practically how the knowledge of God changes life. You cannot be a businessman with the knowledge of God and have the same result in that space with another person who does not know God. Sir, you are a failure. You cannot say you are a believer. It is what you know that makes you superior. And if your knowledge of God does not bring superiority in your delivery, in your results, you don't know God. You are a blasphemer. You are a bad report unto God. The word blasphemy is speaking evil of the Holy One. So your life speaks evil, causes people to speak evil unto the Holy One or about the Holy One. Your life, as somebody who knows God, must have a mark. I challenge anybody. Don't tell me grace doctrine or who is your father in the Lord. Let your life so shine as light. The men seeing your good works will do what? Give glory to your father in heaven. That's what it means to be born again. That's what it means to be Christian. Don't tell me any other thing is crap and useless. God has no value for a life that does not honor him in practical terms. You are the hope of, war, of God on earth. God depends on you to govern the earth. Angels wait on you to rise so that they can help you do the will of God. You are the only one who can honor God on earth. Human beings, not angels. Because the earth is for the human. Spirits come here either to corrupt or to help. But you are the primary agent. If you fail God, nobody can succeed in your place. Angels will not stand in your place. So you have to be careful what you do cannot do things and you say you know God and your result does not speak God. Ah! Cannot. Cannot. So you should have saying you are a firstborn. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 to 24. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Look at connections of a believer innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of firstborn the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven look at connection and affiliation what result do you bear that gives credence credence to this credence to this that, that validates this connection say truly this is a registered person in heaven this is one of Zion. This one too was born in Zion. Ah. Sir, you have to be an unforgettable personality. I don't know how my, I don't know the details of the end of my life. But I have, an, I have a goal that when God calls me home, he will be saved. For those who were there, I was alive in the time of Patrick. This is why I'm interested in living. And when God calls me home, it will be saved by those who are alive. I was blessed to have been born in the time of Patrick. Oh, praise God. 
And people shall say, as they are leaving the earth, long after I'm gone, I was in the generation of Patrick Grace. There's nothing wrong with ambition as long as it's about glorifying God. That's my ambition in God. I want to inspire the world. I want destinies to rise. I want greatness to walk the earth. I want divinity clothed in the flesh, having the affairs of men under their church. Welcome to the assembly of the firstborn who are registered in heaven to God, the judge of all. No one will judge me. It's God that will judge me at the end. So people's opinions don't matter to me. They praise you today, tomorrow they condemn you. It doesn't last. And it shouldn't make you feel good when you are praised. And it should not make you feel terrible because you are not approved. It is not permanent. So firstborn is the first one, the best one, the chief one, the foremost one, the leading one, the most important one. That's what we have been doing. The one who is above others, the one before others, the one ahead of others, the one in front of others. That's what we have decoded in the study of the word firstborn, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. So firstborn means prominence, it means preeminence, it means excellence, it means priority, it means superiority, it means advantage, it means above, it means dominion. Imagine that you have a lifestyle, you have a mindset that in everything you are thinking in terms of excellence, preeminence, prominence. Just imagine the result. That when you are doing something, what guides you, what dictates, what, con what motivates you is leaving behind preeminence, prominence, excellence, priority, superiority. Sir, that is what the business world is looking for. People like Robin Sharma. An Indian American, whether he's an American, but I know he's from India. Tony Robinson, people in the, in the space of peak performance training and motivation. This concept of the firstborn, and you are not Christians. That's what they are using to motivate the world and to make billions. So that they don't just talk to everybody, they talk to exclusive people. CEOs of top-notch organizations getting in a resort and they talk for one hour and they charge in multiple figures. It's the principle that I'm sharing with you and it is the principle of Christ. And you can imagine Christians, Christians, people carry Christ. They are comfortable as mediocre. So you dress. As you are dressing, you have to think of preeminence, prominence. It doesn't mean you go to somebody's boutique and steal and run away. You don't try that. What you have and what is available, the combination of it, the intentionality of how you appear in it, <laughs> how you walk like somebody is confused. It's, it's not about how much it is. It is about how much is the person who wears it. How much are you? You are prominent. You are preeminent. Mark Zuckerberg and people like Steve Jobs, sorry. That's, I'm not quoting St. Paul and St. Peter. I'm so sorry. You know I do that once in a while. Mark Zuckerberg just, just started wearing, when the guy came into prominence, wearing T-shirt. The same T-shirt in every, after that, some time. This billionaire inspired many people. So, you know, T-shirt and, and, uh, and Steve Jobs, the Apple man, they thought all the things were and just appearing like this. All the time he wore that. And some people will have that as fashion. Why? It's about the value of the one who wears, not the value of what is won. Come on. 
Come on. Praise God. Once in a while, I see people try to make dress that look like this, right? <laughs> and they start, when they wear it, they sit in front. So like, see me, I'm also wearing it. That's it. I say, praise God, I know, I noticed. It's just that, just that it's not my tailor that makes sure that. Uh, and that your material may be more expensive than mine. Because it's the cheapest thing I've ever worn in my conscious life. I spend money buying suits and buying stuffs. It's the cheapest thing. But sometimes I just see people, they just wear it and put more colors than I will put and, and stand in front and sit in front. I say, yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I wear it with poise and I expect that after some times, a lot of guys will begin to wear it in other places because of the value of the wearer. Sir, you know what me? I mean, it's not for me. My clothes don't wear me. For your information, tell somebody for your information, my dresses don't put me on. I put my dresses on. So the value of my dress is me. That means whatever it is that is available, as long as there is a worth inside, as long as there is value that is in it, you walk with poise and style so that you confuse somebody. Somebody apologizes for thinking initially that it was cheap. After the way you front and walk like <laughs> I am preeminent, I am prominent, I am excellent, I am above one, chief one, leading, whatever, all that. and somebody say, but boy, you, <laughs> just, just go your way, carry go. Praise God, am I communicating? So it's about who you are, not what you have on the outside. It begins with who you are. Shout, I am prominent. Rise to your feet. Say, I am firstborn. I am prominent. I am preeminent. I am excellent. I am the leading one. I am the chief one. I am the above one. I am the foremost one. Ah, uh, I am most important one. I am the best one. I am the first one. Be seated. No, before you sit, say I am the chief one. What that means is that you owe yourself obligation to daily grow yourself into the chief one. Because you are the only one you know and you are the only one you have. You are the only one you have. You are the only one you own. You can make it the one you have, leading one, chief one, above one, or you can make the one you have. Cheap one, cheap, useless one, empty one. It's not motivation. I'm preaching the word of God. I'm interested in the reason why Jesus Christ came in the flesh and died. That's my interest. And this is the implication. He wanted to bring unto God men and women who will be chiefs, who will be leading ones. So you are entrusted with the meanness of responsibilities but you have the mind of a leading one. You do it in such a beautiful way that somebody looks at you and gives you a title of the CEO of the greatest organization because of the intentionality and the actfulness with which you approach the lowest of responsibility. This is the doctrine of Christ. Be seated. And this is the message I have for you. And this is the message I try to live by. I know I'm not good enough every time I assess me. Before you criticize me, I criticize myself. When I make mistakes, I'm the first judge. I'm very harsh with myself. I rebuke myself. I use days to deal with myself and prepare myself to be better. So I don't worry about what people say about me because I know what I say about me. But I know then that my work that is lifelong is to push the needle, of my, the, the needle of my life on the path, the area, the side of growth, of becoming first, best, chief, foremost. This is the doctrine. This is the meaning of the first one. Psalm 92, verses 12 and 14, which is about the flourishing, the command. 
We are trying to marry and say we apply the firstborn coat to flourish. Psalm 92 verse 12 to 14, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. And of course, you know, Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God through whom and by whom we become the righteousness of God. He is a priest like Melchizedek. And who is Melchizedek? Melech Zedek, king. Righteousness. Zedek in Hebrew is righteousness. Melech in Hebrew is king. And he's also called the king of Salem. So three things about right, uh, three things about Melchizedek. And it is said of Jesus that he's a priest in the order of Melchizedek. is the fulfillment of Melchizedek. So he's the king of righteousness. The king who reigns in righteousness. And because he's the king who reigns in righteousness, he's the king of peace. So then when we talk about the righteous shall flourish, we are talking about us who are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what the scripture is talking about. That those who are made right in Christ, it is their right to prosper, to flourish. The firstborn and just Christ, who is the righteousness of God. The king of righteousness and the king of peace. The one with through whom we have peace with God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. For he himself is our peace. Glory to God. Who has made, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of what? Of separation. So he's the king of peace. And if you read from verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. So he's the king of peace and he's the king of righteousness. In him, we become the righteousness of peace and we are at peace with God. So we are the righteous that the scripture is talking about in Psalm 92. We the firstborn, the leading one. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow. So there is a growing. Tell somebody, grow. In this flourishing, there is a growing. He shall grow. So the secret of this is growth. And we talked about this like three weeks ago. Shall grow. Verse 13, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. And if you go back to our scripture in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. So we are planted in the house of the Lord. I don't know, am I making the connection? So you can see. Firstborn are those planted in the house of the Lord. And the righteous is the one who is planted in the house of the Lord. We are the righteous in Christ who as firstborn are registered in Zion. And the scripture says God has preferred the gates of Zion to all the gates, all other gates of Israel. We are those planted in the house of the Lord. Or we should be those planted in the house of the Lord. And the result of that is that in that scripture, the results the result of it is that they shall flourish. Those planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Say flourish. They shall flourish in the house of our God. So when you grow in the court of the firstborn, you grow in doing things intentionally to bring about preeminence. That you do something and you cause those who do those things well to begin to honor you. That you do whatever you do with an edge, cutting edge, and pushing the boundary of excellence. When you have that as a lifestyle and you keep growing in that, eventually something will happen. Let's look at Mark chapter 7 and verse 37. And I'm about, I'm about concluding this. Mark chapter 7 and verse 37. 
And the scripture records of Jesus, who is the firstborn, the prototokos, through whom and in whom we are born as God's firstborn, as God's leading one, as God's chief ones on earth. And they were astonished beyond measure. And they were saying to themselves, read, what did they say? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Read it loud. What did they say? That's it. That's the spirit of Christ. He has done all things well. That's the firstborn code. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services, Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for World Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibom State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling, and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.